Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be discussing about uh, how we are going to use uh, this robot for programming. And before heading towards that one, we need to understand first of all, what do we mean by a maze? So let's get into the basics of uh, understanding what a maze is meant for. And uh, later we'll be discussing about uh, what are the various algorithms that we can follow in understanding the mage in a better perspective so to getting started with we need to first of all identify the possible paths in a mage so let me first of all introduce you with uh, the various uh, things that are involved in a given mage so for instance if we are uh, saying that we need to identify uh, a given path for instance have a look at this particular path uh, a maze is nothing but basically what you are able to see uh, on the screen uh, where we have a couple of uh, possible paths on each and every travel cell method so uh, consider that this is a robot and uh, the circular path that is actually shown here is a robot and this is the beginning so let us say this is the start and this is going to be the end so if you observe being a human we can easily identify that the easiest and the shortest path is uh, to go forward and then move towards the right direction and then directly have a left direction and we are going to end up exactly at this particular point but uh, for a robot uh, though it has some sort of intelligence it is going to be in the form of a code where we are going to program it so uh, in this uh, process of completing the course we are going to uh, write an algorithm which is something known as a uh, left hand wall algorithm there are possibilities uh, and alternatives of this particular algorithm like right hand uh, wall following algorithm and random uh, flow algorithm but uh, apart from all these things and this is the most popular one uh, where the things are very simple uh, when we go up with this left hand wall algorithm so uh, in this the things are something like this so let me first uh, get back to the original slide where okay so in this case as you are able to see uh, we have an intersection here which is something like a right t Similarly, we have another intersection here, which is left T, and we got a cross intersection here where we are having four possible ways. And here again, we have the same cross, uh, whereas here we simply have a dead end where we don't uh, have any other option rather than moving in a reverse direction. So the same case happens with this, this, and this one. And if you observe clearly, I have mentioned a couple of things like uh, if we discuss and if we are interested in fo uh, following this particular left hand wall algorithm. So we'll be uh, using this particular algorithm, so called left hand wall. So what it basically is. So it, it actually says that whenever you have a possibility, for example, uh, we are about to begin with this particular point and we are moving ahead where uh, here the robot generally stops because it finds the junction and it has four uh, currently as it is already following this particular path, we still have these three remaining paths. So this robot will be in a confusion like whether to follow path one or two or three. So uh, since uh, we are about to follow this left hand follow algorithm, we'll always prefer left whenever we have multiple options. So uh, this robot will first of all prefer going left and that's the reason why I have mentioned left here. Next, it has reached a dead end. So here we're going to take a back turn. So I am representing every back turn with a B. So the same thing happens here, here. Uh, and of course, these two places. So here my robot will be taking a U-turn and it will move ahead. So remember, uh, this is the forward direction of our robot. So it has taken left, now its head is towards the left direction. 
now once it rotates here uh, now its head direction is towards the right so when it is moving with its head in this particular direction for this robotic direction this is going to be the left direction so that's why i have mentioned left here the same thing happens here the head is going to be towards the top side and hence it will be having a left direction again and the same thing is going to be continued we have a left direction and then we got a u-turn and then we have a straight direction because uh, this is very clear uh, that whenever you are having a right turn you need to simply move straight and whenever you have a left turn i mean a left t kind of a logic you need to move simply left so to summarize all these things we need to first of all identify what are the possible junctions that are available in any given line based image so as you are able to see on the screen we have eight possibilities so out of these eight possibilities this is the structure that we'll be using for end because this having a white part inside a black uh, uh, a surface is a unique one that we are going to use specifically for our course you may find a variety of uh, ends like you may have a small uh, black dash or somebody may use a complete white portion or somebody may use uh, black within white or white within black like what we have used currently so for our course we'll be using this particular symbol for identifying the end now okay so as we can see the sensor which is placed on the front side of our robot now there are a couple of important things to discuss here that is uh, whenever you are about to program your robot for scanning a black line so currently we are designing this robot for scanning uh, or following a black line i mean a black maze will be solved like what we have seen in the slide about a white surface so uh, the important thing that we are about to discuss here is the width of the line that we need to place on our white surface so that it can capture properly so uh, there is a one single rule always uh, depending upon what sensors you have integrated on your robot uh, you need to decide the width of your black line now uh, as you can see uh, consider this is the width of uh, a black line and if i place it above my sensor grid you will find that at a given moment of time it will be able to cover only one single sensor so this is an optimum uh, width of what we need to integrate in our image like even though if i have a little bit uh, greater width as i'm having on the tip here so even then it won't be able to cover two sensors at a given moment of time so you need to have the width of a line in such a way that uh, it won't be covering two sensors at a given moment of time side by side i'm not talking about this y axis so you may say like um, this is currently covering two lines so it doesn't matter like the width width wise it should not cover two sensors at a given moment of time so now what happens is if i am about to travel uh, uh, traverse or trace a black line then my robot is going to follow this way where the in between two sensors are always following my black line in case if it is coming out of this then the first sensor it is going to hit is the left sensor so that i'm going to rectify my movement and i'm going to get back in such a way that my center two sensors uh, which lie on the y-axis uh, will be true always so as we have discussed in our earlier video this is a sensor which is having totally six ir sensors of which four are placed on the x-axis. If you compare this with a graphical format, then um, all these leftmost two sensors and rightmost two sensors are placed on my x-axis, whereas I'm having two sensors on the negative x-axis and two sensors on the negative, uh, sorry, positive x-axis. Whereas if I bisect this particular sensor horizontally then you will find that i have one sensor on the positive y-axis and one sensor on the bottom negative y-axis this should be uh, a structure which is uh, sufficient enough to trace any maze uh, because at a given moment of time we are either scanning vertical lines or horizontal lines so if you have everything in line uh, for example all the six uh, ir sensors are placed on a single line so that when I'm holding this line like this, all are getting covered, then it won't be of any much, uh, I mean, much use for us to uh, trace the junctions and all. So uh, as you can see, uh, we have all the possibilities like what we have seen uh, earlier. It covers across, it covers 
right L, it covers the left L, it covers the left T, and it covers the right T. So uh, you should have a pattern on your IR sensors, which is going to represent each and every possible junction that we have seen. So this was an important point to discuss. Now let's get back to the slide. So in these eight possible paths, uh, or so-called junctions, uh, it is important to discuss the first one, where whenever we encounter in this particular first junction with an end kind of a junction, then we need to stop our robot. And whenever we encounter with a T, we need to go in the left direction. And whenever we encounter with a U, we need to take a U-turn at the end of this particular section, so which we have represented with the help of B uh, in our previous slide. And whenever you encounter with a cross, you need to again go and prefer the left direction, though we are having three possibilities as we have seen. And whenever you have a left turn, there is no other possible way, so you will be moving definitely left. And for a simple right turn, you'll be moving right. And whenever we have a right T, we won't prefer going right, but we will prefer going straight, which is represented with an S. And whenever you have a left T, you have to prefer going left. And this specific uh, process of following these things for the discussed respective junctions is known as a left-hand wall following algorithm. Now let us simply uh, go through an animation which will uh, make you understand the things much easier. So imagine that this is a robot uh, which uh, we have designed and it has sensors in a fashion like this. So sensor number one, sensor number two, so these are the y-axis sensors and we have two sensors on the left side and two sensors on the right side. So at any given moment of time, for instance, if we are talking about this junction, then our sensors would be uh, falling in a direction like this. So that, it, uh, so that whenever our left and right x-axis sensors are on and positive y-axis sensor and negative y-axis sensors are also on, it's a meaning that we have encountered a cross and we need to decide which direction to move. So similarly, we are going to uh, trace out all these things. Like for this one, uh, we'll be having the right side two sensors as open one, because these two sensors, the right two sensors are falling on a white surface. So these things will be giving us a zero and a zero. Whereas the left sensors will be giving us a black sensor, I mean a black surface, so it will be giving us a one and a one. And we have the in-between sensors as also one. So a condition where we have six sensors placed like this, then they will be giving us one, 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 and zero, zero. This actually represents a left T. So now let me show you with the help of an animation like what exactly the robot is going to follow whenever we encounter something like this. So let's have a look at the animation like initially the robot travels ahead at the junction it, go, it moves left then take a back turn left and left again one more left a u-turn straight back left and left and you turn, go straight, left and left, and then end up with the final destination. So ultimately, uh, the path that we're about to record in our software, uh, whenever we program our microcontroller, it should be recording all these paths that it has encountered while it was traversing the path. So I'll show you a demo and a way of programming this thing in our next video, where we'll be simply writing uh, or considering this path and then the solution is going to be something like this R and L. So 
this is the exact solution. Now let me show you. If we begin with this one, being a human being, we can easily identify that the shortest path is going to be first move right and then move left. So that's how the solution comes up as R and L. So this is a non-optimized left-hand wall following path, whereas this is an optimized path. So what we are going to build in this course is this. We are going to first of all record in our first iteration the exact path by using the left-hand wall following algorithm. And then uh, whenever the robot reaches this particular destination, it is going to give us some audio-based notification with the help of a buzzer. Then whenever it beeps out, it's a meaning that it has identified the path and it has optimized so that in the second iteration, whenever you leave this robot and it begins the journey, it is going to simply follow R and L. So the next point is going to be uh, how to optimize the path. So as you can see and observe the path like it has initially recorded LBL. Okay, so we need to first of all optimize this one. Now it's a meaning that whenever your robot is going through a back turn, it is an unnecessary path because we, since we are following the left-hand wall algorithm it has taken a left turn here it has taken a u-turn here and then has taken a left turn here so we can eliminate this complete u-turn path by moving forward and similarly here we have another turn that is going left then taking a u-turn and then moving straight can be simplified as just moving right so wherever you have a left, wherever you have left and a back turn and a left turn, it has to be replaced with a straight connection like what we have seen here. So left, back and a left will be replaced with a straight. Similarly, a left, a back and a straight is again replaced with right. Similarly, we have six other possibilities. Of optimizing path. So I'll show you all the possible paths in our next video where we'll be discussing about how uh, this particular path has been optimized to simply right and left. And then I'll also show you how to uh, program this that we'll discuss in our next video. Thank you.